Hey, I'm Jeff. Uh, Not Dead Yet Adventures is the channel name, and I want to do a video talking about some books I read and how they affected my life. To do that, I'm going to give you a little bit of background information, and I'm going to tell you about three books and what they meant to me, and you know the fact that I still carry one in my bag today. Um, I actually carry a bunch of books in my bag today. This is another big, thick one. Um, but this one came up today, and I actually pulled it out, started reading it. And I've carried this one, you know, with me since I left America 18 months ago. Um, but that's what this video is going to be. It's basically just me talking uh, about some books and why I think they're important. But to understand why they're important, first, you need a little background information. So, I left America... 18 months ago, not to just to explore the world, not just to go out and seek, uh, you know, and check off bucket list items. I left America to change the way I was living, both mentally, physically, emotionally, and to save my life. I genuinely thought I was headed for the grave quickly. Um, I've lost a lot of weight. I've changed my diet. Now, I thought I was living a healthy lifestyle in America. I thought I was gradually getting healthier and healthier. But uh, the more I learned on the road, the more I got away from the toxic environment I was in in California, the more I realized I wasn't really getting that healthier at a rate of change that would have had any meaningful effect. Um, so, prior to me leaving America, about a year prior, I started reading this book. Uh, this book is How to Think Like a Roman Emperor by Donald Robert Robertson. There we go. And I'll put up a screenshot with these. Um, this book, it's about stoicism, and I'm no expert. Um, but I pull this book out all the time. Not all the time, but I pull the book out quite a bit. I mean, you can see the... It's pretty beat up. Um, it's got notes in it. It's got folded over pages. Um, but I pull it out and reference it and reread portions of it. And that's wh why I like hardbound books, or but not necessarily hardbound, but I like paper books because you can make notes in it, pick it up and read it when you want, um, and reread sections. Like there's some passages in this book in the front here. I reread them you know, four or five times. I'd read every day, you know, for 20 minutes or a half hour or whatever. And, you know, there's a couple sections in here. I just kept rereading until I really got it. You know, and I still have, you know, tons of notes on some pages. Um, but what this book really taught me, like if I were to break down the three books and, you know, the one key thing this book taught me, you always thought stoicism was about not feeling emotions and being stoic and you don't know you're stoic, you don't feel emotions. And what this book taught me was to not shy away from my emotions, but to keep them in their place, to understand that emotions are a blessing. Emotions are a valuable tool. Emotions are, you know, we're lucky to feel emotions. You know, you look at a tree and wonder does it feel emotions and we don't know if it does or not you know most people will argue it doesn't but it may and we just don't know but for me mo emotions you look at all the great things in life and they're surrounded by emotions but emotions are also a curse because if you're using emotions to make decisions that's a really bad thing uh, and that's what this book taught me this book taught me that to feel my emotions, to embrace my emotions. But when it came down to decisions, planning, or actions, to check those emotions and put them in their place and make sure I acted with a clear, pragmatic you know, thought process. And I can't do it 100% of the time. That's why I pick up the book and reread it. And it, there's a lot more in the book than that. But that was the biggest single takeaway for me was to break it down and understand that no matter how angry or how sad or how 
confused or depressed or whatever to just stop and make the best decision with the best uh, factual or you know best hard data that I had whether it was hard data or not you know, with the best available data I had the best available information uh, the most likely scenario to you know play out whatever that was and to remove that doubt remove that fear remove that anxiety from that decision making process not to ignore those emotions but but not to embrace them in the decision making process or include them in the decision making process um because all those emotions are great and they're valuable and they're important but not when making you know decisions about my future or decisions to take action or not take action so that was the big takeaway i don't have the other two books with me um i'll put up screenshots of them so the other book was it takes what it takes by Trevor Moat, and that book was really, you know, and I read these in this order, and it, it really was what I needed. I don't know if this is what you need. I don't know what you need. Um, this is what I needed to help me start changing my life in a really positive direction very rapidly. Um, it Takes What It Takes by Trevor Moat. He talks about neutral thinking. And the most critical thing I learned from that book was very simply, words matter. And, you know, he talks about this in a couple of lectures as well. Um, you can find online or a couple of podcasts. He talks about how there is no hard evidence or, you know, evidence that positivity, you know, plays a significant role. Saying positive things doesn't play in a significant role. But, you know, I read a bunch of his other uh, material and, you know, listened to a lot of his podcasts. And it's really interesting because, you know, he talks a lot about the mental picture. And um, and in one story, he, I'm going to, I can't remember the names, but he's talking to a pro basketball player and if you search him online and listen to a lot of his stuff, you'll hear this story firsthand. But he's talking about a pro basketball player, or talking to a pro basketball player. He's been in the league forever and a day. He was, he's an older player. Uh, and they were talking about some young guys in college that Trevor was working with. These college athletes, they'd gone out and done a bunch of stupid stuff. And the old guy was saying, like, how do they think they're ever going to make it to where I'm at if they're doing that stupid stuff? And that's where it kind of, that's, I don't know if that's where he got it takes what it takes, but that's where it takes what it takes rang in my mind. So if I want to go to Italy, I have to figure out what it takes and do what it takes. If I want to lose weight, I have to not eat that bullshit. I have to not drink soda. I have to do this. I have to do that. And there's no wiggle room, right? Decisions are made. Once you have a clear painted goal, decisions are made. You just have to execute them or not. You just have to succeed or fail. And then just increase your number of successes and you'll eventually get there. So, you know, a lot of people, I always think about, you know, the analogy is overused, but it's been used forever. You know, you're walking a path. So if you want to get up a hill, the path is clear, right? Up to the top of the hill, the path is clear. You just have to take steps and sometimes you're going to take a step and you know you're not going to step forward you're going to step sideways or backwards and it's just getting more steps going forward than sideways and backwards and you know and then the faster you know the the more you the, per, the more percentage you get going forward the faster you're going to go and so you know listening to that story him tell that story it really drove that home to me that I can do pretty much anything within reason. I just have to be willing to take those steps and do make those decisions and then get better at get a better percentage of successes over fails. So if I want to lose 10 kilograms in a month, you know, I have to do X, Y, and Z. Well, I'm probably not going to hit it, you know, 100% right out of the block. I'm probably going to screw up and have 
you know, a donut one day or a pastry or, you know, something, right? Especially when it comes to diet, right? You're never going to be perfect. You know, you're going to be out and about and like, oh, I really want to try that. Let me try that, right? Um, you know, and striving for perfection is, is great and all, but, you know, it's not very realistic uh, in a lot of my world and a lot of the decisions. So when it comes to especially budget and food, right, um, you know, you're going to break down and buy that, you know, $8 coffee at Starbucks once in a while, or you're going to, you know, buy something or give somebody some money or whatever it is, right? You're going to make mistakes. And it's just a matter of getting more wins than losses uh, to keep you moving forward. And so his book and his talks really drove that home. But the big thing from him was to not talk negatively to myself or listen to negative people and to really when something bad does happen or a mistake is made, not to ignore it, not to, you know, this is his whole getting neutral, right? The past is real. The past happened. You made that mistake. But what do you, you do next isn't that, the thing he always says is the past isn't predictive of the future if you take a different action, right? So the past will be predictive of the future if you don't change. So if you're always been fat and you keep eating donuts, you're always going to be fat. But if you've always been fat and you stop eating donuts, you might lose a little weight. If you've always been broke and you're buying stupid shit every day, then you're always going to be broke, no matter how much money you make. But if you stop buying stupid shit, then you might have some money left over. Um, and that whole thing really helped me and it was using the words right so instead of beating myself up over making a mistake I would look at it as an opportunity to do better tomorrow or I'd look at it this way and I would stop with that self dialogue and then the other thing is not not speak negative shit out loud um, you know and I struggle with this still you know I've been working on this for you know, about two years I've been working on this, uh, you know, to stop saying negative shit. I, I have a lot of uh, anxiety, paranoia, you know, doom and gloom racing through my head. And it's really hard for me to shut that down and just, but it, the more I shut it down and the less I say out loud, the better it is. And there's a couple examples I could give, um, I'll tell one quick story here just because it was so, so funny to me. Um, I'm leaving Albania to go on a little side trip and I had to catch a flight to, I think I was going to Serbia, then Croatia. And so it's, I was having problems with my computer. I'm fussing around with my computer and trying to get some memory cards cleared. I didn't want to take my computer with me, but I didn't have room on the memory cards. And the, anyway, it's a long story. So I've, playing with a computer all day. It's like, you know, I had to leave the hotel at like three in the morning or four in the morning, something like that to get to the airport on time for, you know, an early flight. Anyway, I get ready, you know, clock is ticking. I've been up all day, all night. I've been fussing around, cleaning, making sure everything's clean before I leave. So I come back and it's nice. And then I go to get in the shower. There's no water, literally no water. And I needed a shower badly, like very badly. No wet wipes, no nothing. The only water I have is in the refrigerator. So I go in the refrigerator, I get some bottles of water out of the refrigerator at like three in the morning. And I'm trying to take a bird bath in the shower with bottles of water that are, you know, frigid out of the refrigerator. Didn't work well, but I did the best I could. Um, I got to the airport, you know, oh, and then I go outside and usually a place where there's a bunch of taxis right down the street, usually there all night. I go out there, there's no taxis. I can't get one on the phone or anything. And so I'm running around back and forth, literally running, looking for taxis. Uh, finally get a taxi, get to the airport and I'm spent. I stink. I feel grungy. 
you know, I'm just, I'm done, right? I get to the airport and there's a problem checking in. I couldn't check in online, so I had to go to the check-in counter. And I go up there and there's a problem with the seats and she's like, you know, asking me. And I said, you know, I really don't care where I sit. You know, she's asking me about upgrades and this and that. And, you know, I was just done and I gave up and I just went back to neutral. I just went, you know, because everything was spinning out of control. I'm about to leave on this trip. And, you know, that was the time when I would be frustrated, angry and be like, you know, explosive. Um verbally or whatever, emotionally explosive. Um, and I just said, you know what? There's nothing I can do about it. Just went to neutral and I, said, I looked at her. I gave her the biggest smile I could. And I said, you know, I don't really care where I'm sick. Cause it's like a three hour flight and or two hour flight. I don't know, but it's like, I'm just happy to be going. So, you know, put me wherever you want. So I get on the plane, I didn't even really check my ticket. I get on the plane, I'm like looking at the ticket. <laughs> Everybody's crammed up in the front. What had happened is they took a small plane, put it on a big plane, they didn't really adjust seats. So the plane, the whole like back third of the plane is dead empty, except for me and like two other people. So everybody's like crammed up in these seats, tight as could be. The air, the, you know, people weren't letting people change the, Crew wasn't letting people change seats. And I go back there, I've got a whole seat to lay down, take a nap on. It was just wonderful. And I really needed a nap after being up all night, uh, not having a shower. And everything just went, you know, that started the snowball of great things happening. The entire trip was just fabulous. You know, and uh, it was so funny that one of the friends I was meeting, she was talking about how the best sushi places are always, you know, that place where you find three or four seats, you know, two or three tables. And I'm running around, uh, we we're in Split, Croatia. I'm running around Split and I happen to run by this place and I'm like, wait, that's a sushi place. And I look in there and there's like four seats inside. They were closing, a couple little tables outside. I go back the next day, it was like, fabulous sushi and it was just so funny because the whole trip was like that all because and you know I credit it to and maybe this is just me being crazy and I'm okay with that but I changed my demeanor right then and there when I gave up on you know and just said go to neutral relax everything will work out because if I had gotten in that gal's face or gotten angry at the situation and you know, dumped it on her, you know, then what would have happened? She would have been like, oh, well, let me put you, you know, between these two other fat guys and see how you like that trip. And then I get off the plane, I'm in an angry mood, and then, you know, it would have snowballed in the other direction. Now, whether any of that matters, I don't know, and I don't really care. That's what I believe. I believe that I changed my future by acting differently. Um, than I normally would have. So the third book, so that book taught me really two things there. It, you know, it taught me about neutral thinking, but it, it's really the words. And, um, you know, even down to simple things like um, can't and won't and negative words like that, I really try to avoid those. Um, and I still use them, right? But it triggers a little bell in the back of my head, hey, what, how could you have said that differently? Um, it, it is probably one of the most impact, impactful books I've read in my life. Um, and, be, and part of it is he brings the receipts. So it's not just like some, I'm not a big fan of Hocus Pocus. So when he says things, he's got many, many stories to back it up that are legitimate stories or he's got hard data or you know he it's not like he just made this shit up he was out there researching it and studying and it's really um really amazing the studies people have been doing in the last 20 years that we're not really hearing about in mainstream and he referenced a lot of those um both in the book and in his discussions 
So, you know, words matter. And it's not just the words you say or the words you think, it's the words you hear on a regular basis. You know, at one point he talks about country music and how that's you know, probably not the best thing for you or blah, blah, blah. And um, it really, really made me think about who I'm letting in my life. Um, and one thing that kind of stood out is really listen to people. I really listen to people and, you know, I won't exclude somebody from a conversation for a short period of time, but the people I say no to in my life are more important decisions than the people I say yes to. When I say mean say no and say yes, it's about spending time. So the people I want to spend time with are positive, happy, and improving me. The people I don't want to spend time with are the belly acres, the bitchers, the wankers. I don't know, is that a real word? I don't know. Wingers, people who whinge, I don't know, is that right? Of Game of Thrones flashing through my head for some reason. But anyway, being very selective about who I spend time with and who I listen to, whether it's virtually in podcasts or in person, really makes a difference. And it's not the casual one or one or two times, you know, here and there. It's the people that I let in on a regular basis and the inputs I let in. So whether it's TV, radio, any of that being more selective and saying no to the negative or, you know, downer type stuff or the, you know, toxic political stuff or whatever, just cutting all, a lot of that toxicity out has made a huge difference. Um, and the more I let in, the more I see it affect me. Um, and so, you know, it's a constant effort required there to, to monitor and, and manage, you know, the quantity that comes in, because you, you have to let some in, right? Um, so the third book is kind of, I don't know, I almost feel it's kind of silly saying it out loud, but The Twelve Rules by Jordan Peterson. Uh, I haven't read his second book, Twelve More Rules. I probably will try to get to that this year. But and that book was kind of like, like frosting on the cake. You know, or, you know, that's not a good example. Um, but essentially, you know, th that book was kind of like that for me. The 12 Rules is all real common sense stuff. Um, and it's funny because one example I can give you that really made a difference from that book was just the reminder, stand, you know, stand up straight, put your shoulders back. And so I finished that book when I was in Albania, or right before I got to Albania. And... When I went to Albania, it was important for me, like I was was really working the walking. I was struggling to get, you know, to where I could walk more than, you know, walk farther and farther every day or, you know, faster, farther, that type of thing. Um, and so what I was doing is three days a week, I would try to go on this long walk and then two days a week I would focus mainly on my stride and my posture. So standing up straighter, you know, keeping my chin up as I walked. Um, and, you know, I was being selective of where I walked. So it was walk on the, you know, I had this flat route and it wasn't very far, but I was also trying to increase my stride because I noticed, you know, being fat, lazy, uh, was, anyway, being overweight and, you know, sedentary, I wasn't striding very far. And the farther you stride, you it makes you feel better. Uh, it turns out there's these molecules that you know you release when you contract your muscles. So anyway, it's all this BS, right? But I just wanted a, a longer stride and I wanted a faster stride. So I would focus on standing up straighter. You know, I noticed, um, and I noticed this still today, you know, this was a year ago, over a year ago, I was working on this very diligently, you know, twice a week. But I noticed the more I lean forward and roll my shoulders down, and it's this chest plate, or it's the back, but, you know, at this chest plate level, it's 
you know, difference between that and this. And most of the time I'm, you know, was like this because I'm overweight, I'm rolled forward, I've got a backpack on, it rolls me forward, I'm trying to hide from people, I got my head down, that rolls that chest plate forward. Where if I push the chest plate out, sit up straighter, um, I just feel better. And it was really funny, I was just in Kuala Lumpur, I bought a book, I sat down and I was so happy to find the book and I wanted to sit down and read the first, you know, whatever. Uh, so I get a cup of coffee and I sit in the chair and I just naturally sat up straight in like this and I grabbed the book, in fact it was this book right here. So I just, I'm sitting there, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm sitting there, you know, at the coffee, or it's like a coffee shop, bookstore, like a, um, you know, legitimate, nice bookstore. And so I grab a coffee and I sit up straight and I just start reading the book. And it was so funny because I just felt good. I just felt really good. One, I was really happy to find the book and, you know, really shocked I found the book uh, in Malaysia on Christmas Eve. But two, just engaging in that posture and... You know, just, it really felt good. I don't know how to describe it. But 12 rules, you know, like I said, most of it is just common sense. But it's one of those books, read it, make some notes about the 12 rules. And then every so often, you know, whether you keep it on your phone or an email or a piece of paper, you know, um, write out what I would recommend, what worked for me is write out the 12 rules and then write a couple notes under them, you know, because he breaks it down, but you just need a couple notes to bring it back to your mind. And every so often, you know, refresh those and review them. And it just, you know, re brings it right back into your life. I like to review things until it becomes habit, until it becomes second nature. So, and that was really important for me, like with the posture thing. I didn't realize how much changing my posture posture would change my mood or my attitude. Um, and that leads into some other things uh, we'll get into about changing my life in another video. But those, putting those three books down in the beginning really made a difference in my life because it started me changing my habits, changing my life. Um, they really gave me the foundation to seek a new lifestyle, a new mentality and a new emotional um, level of resilience, I think is the right word. I still struggle with words. I still suck at English, both reading and spoken language, but getting a little better there too. Um, but those are the three books that really changed my life. Um, and, you know, since I've read, read a couple more, um, I'm in the process of this one. Um, I just finished his other one. Where is it? Right here. So I just finished this one. This was a quick read. I was surprised how quick the read is, but there's a lot of videos to watch with this one. This is uh, Doing the Impossible by Patrick Bet David. Big fan of his. Uh, this is a really neat book. There's a lot of videos and exercises in this book. So I read this book in about three days, which is amazing for me because I'm a really slow, bad reader. But that's how easy to read is. But I'm still actually going back through some of the exercises and some of the uh, videos. Um, this book doesn't apply to me totally. This is uh, really focused at like the entrepreneur type person. But a lot of the lessons learned in business can be applied to your life. Uh, and that's kind of why I like Patrick Bet David is he breaks down all these business lessons are easier to me to apply to my life and to me changing than a lot of these people that are, you know, talking about changing your life, talking about, you know, focusing on how to change your life. I think a lot of his stuff is more digestible for me than um, a lot of their hocus pocus. Um, you know, I, I try to be even as, as emotional as I can be, I try to be very um, pragmatic and very, 
I don't know. Not necessarily stoic, but scientific, I guess. I don't know. I don't have words for it. It's late. But that's what I got. Those are the three books. Um, let me know what you think. If you have more recommendations, let me know. Uh, I do have meditations. I'm going to read meditations itself. Uh, can start this book soon. But th this book, How to Think Like a Roman Emperor, is basically a synopsis of meditations or a interpretation of meditations. Um, and this book really was the key for me to start. I wish I got this book when I was younger. Um, you know, this is one of the few books, like there's a dozen books I would say, you know, read before you're 20. And this is one of them. Um, yeah, that's what I got. And I'll get into, you know, how all of this helped me change my life and the other factors. I, I was making some notes about this and there's about seven or eight things I did that really changed my life and really empowered me to go out and embrace this new new life I'm living that's pretty fabulous. You know, you're like, what's the point of all this? Well, the point of all this is I wouldn't be out here securely living on the road without making these changes. Um, you know, I wouldn't be able to go and do the things I've done. I wouldn't have survived. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I'd still be in California, you know, waiting to die in a chair or homeless on the streets or, you know, hiding in an apartment, you know, scared to go out because I was too temperamental, too, uh, you know, still be suffering. I'm not really suffering. I guess that's the most important. That's the right answer right there. How those books really changed. They helped me stop suffering so much. Really empowered me to come out into the world. And, uh, you know, I've only got, I haven't even counted the countries, but I've got 18 months on the road. Pretty happy with that. Future looks pretty friggin' amazing. Pretty friggin' amazing. So, Hope that helps someone. Take care. Bye.